So this is what four days of motoring was all about. It was to get to somewhere like this, cover ourselves in Factor 50 suntan lotion and find one of these golden, sandy, desolate little tropical islands. This one in particular is surrounded by a lot of terns. So we've got terns nesting on all the rocks all the way around the northern side of this island. And uh, every now and then, if you disturb them, here they go. Terns are my favourite seabirds, they're a sailor's friend. When you're on long passages, they're on long passages as well because they stay out, out at sea for a long time and they'll come and rest on the rigging and spend a bit of time with you sometimes. But they're beautiful birds, fantastic little birds. So we've come ashore at Pulau Tinggi and both of us are amazed about how much it reminds us of the Maldives. Uh, so obviously it's a Muslim area here just like the Maldives. There are ladies that are covered, not completely covered, but their hair, their hair and so forth. And we've got lots of just tiny little houses, not much going on, very quiet. There's a mosque right behind you and what looks like a school or a municipal uh, building of some kind. Uh, there's one small resort hotel which we'll go and have a look at, but really it's just very, very sleepy island with the most magnificent water in front of it, shallow for ages, lots of coral, lots of reefs. It's just beautiful here. On this rather laid-back island we have decided to stop off and get a light refreshment. Coconuts, fresh coconut, very very refreshing, very tasty. Liz said that this was very similar to the Maldives and it is, it really is. Almost everything about it is identical, there's just one difference and that is that we have mountains here. Of course in the Maldives they are two yeah. meters high above sea level and that's about it. Whereas here we've got the big mountains. But aside from that, pretty much everything else is the same. A nice little time on Tingi. It's a nice interlude, little break, not doing anything, just hanging out. Got some quite strong winds today. I don't know what they register, probably 
I don't know, there must be a good 10 knots and it's not even nine o'clock yet, which is always quite good. So we're gonna take this opportunity to now head up to Tierman, which is approximately 35 to 40 miles away. So uh, early start, well, early-ish, and um, gonna weigh anchor, and hopefully we're gonna sail all the way. We've just left the lee of Pulau Tinggi and now we've got proper wind because uh, it's a big high mountain on that island. So we're doing four and a half knots, no engine. It's about 25 miles to go and it's just glorious. The wind's on the beam, just on the beam, slightly um, broad to beam reach at the moment, so it couldn't be better. This is all very pleasant. We've done a consistent four and a half knots. Pretty much uh, most of the way we're closer now to Tierman than we are uh, to Tingi. And there's been a few fishing boats passing, passing over the bow of Vespa, heading in a sort of southeasterly direction. Some have their nets out, some don't. Just had to make a slight detour to one fishing boat, but um, it's not half as bad as it is on the west side and it's just it's so nice to be sailing again you know this is the longest that we have sailed in i think months well, as soon as we turn that engine off that's it we've just done a consistent speed wind's been consistent the sea state has been pretty calm approaching Tierman um, we're on the southwest corner and the winds picked up so we are now cruising along at over seven knots which is great shame it didn't happen earlier but uh, anyway we've got the Sun above us now so it's lighting up the east side the west side of the island It's an overcast Tuesday and we need to check in. So the deal is around Malaysia, you check in and out of uh, the port of entries and uh, it doesn't include immigration, it's just Harbour Master and Customs. So it's really just for the boat. And we were told that it was somewhere along this little strip. Now we've just come to the little marina here, which is always full. So we just brought the dinghy in, tied it up. And behind me are the offices, empty. Closed, locked up, empty, empty shops. Uh, there's a little sign on the door saying that we actually have to go to the main town jetty, which is there. So now we've got to figure out how we get there. It's all new to us. So uh, yeah, we're just going to do a little bit of investigating and see what we can find out. We have quite a bit of laundry to do, so we've been trying to find the local laundrette. And after asking a couple of locals, we have found somewhere. They haven't got a dryer here, but it doesn't matter. We've said just leave it out in the sunshine to dry. And this is the laundry. Got to just leave it here behind the door, apparently. Next on our list of priorities, and it's really top of the list, is to find the duty-free store. Apparently there are two on this island. Tierman is a duty-free island, so it's a place to stock up on beer and my, my beer supplies have been depleted somewhat. And I think Liz is after a couple of bottles of something. So we're just having a look now, but uh, one thing that strikes us immediately coming ashore is that everything seems closed. 
Now it's, um, it's only 10 o'clock so it is quite early for a lot of local people but uh, there isn't much open at the moment. This is the big uh, duty-free complex. Everything's all shuttered down. So we're at the main ferry terminal now and supposedly the harbour master is here. Well, we found his sign, but of course it's closed. Right, I'm off to do a diesel run. Uh, yesterday we took in our diesel jerry cans uh, to a shop and they said to return today at about three o'clock. We used a lot of diesel over the last uh, couple of weeks and our tanks were really quite low. So I've already dispensed the lot, first lot in there. We're probably gonna have to do at least another two runs, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm gonna go inshore now and see if I can pay for that, sort that out. And also nip to the post office because we've got a couple of things uh, coming to us in the post. Uh, let's see if they've turned up. No post. It's not going to be here till at least Tuesday and we're planning to leave on Monday. So, oh well, just have to pick it up when we uh, come back. Not that urgent really. So, that's that done. Now I've got to head to the marina, park up the dinghy, excuse the noise, and uh, see if I can find my diesel. Meanwhile, back at the marina. Uh, this is Asmol, and he's uh, one of the guys that deals with diesel. Spent a lot of money on it, actually, four ringgit a litre. That's about 80p. Not that much uh, compared to the UK, of course, but uh, quite expensive by Malaysian standards. I was told it should have been three ringgit, so not sure what's going on there. Anyway, needs must and all that. Guess I should help this guy get, what, 10 jerry cans into the dinghy? Ain't gonna happen. So that diesel run was a bit of a bastard, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it's very hot and sweaty and it's a lot of hard work carting all those. We did two runs in the end. Yeah. And then of course we had to fill it up at this end. But anyway, it, it's done. Yep. So that's one of the big preparations out of the way. You've also been doing a couple of things in preparation for our trip to the Anambas Islands. What are they? Yeah, just clearing up the fridge and getting everything sorted. And uh, we also bought whatever fresh food we could find here on Tierman. So potatoes and tomatoes, onions, stuff like that. Found a nice cabbage. And in order to keep them for as long as possible, what we do is spray them with a bleach water solution, clean them up, get rid of any bacteria that's about to burrow in there. and then I dry them off in the sun up here and then I put them carefully away um, hanging or in the fridge. Yep, and then there was one other thing we had to do, wasn't there, which uh, you've just put on your iPad? Yeah, um, the charts for the Anambas are very interesting because Navionics is what we have on the boat and on mm. our, on, on our uh, phones and so forth, but it's notoriously inaccurate for the area. The area is charted, but it's not really that accurate, so we were advised to get CMAP. Mm. And you found an app for that, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of cruisers know CMAP through Maxi. Uh, they know, they have, well, they've had it for a while, I think, their app. And yes, you were, you were told, or we were told that it was more precise. More precise, so, yeah. And also Ovital Map. You've, Ovital uh, Map we use. I think perhaps we're going to talk a bit more about apps mm. generally at another another time. So there's Ovital Map, which is basically Google Earth, and so we cache the Google Earth imagery. So by using Google Earth and the CMAP uh, chart, we'll hopefully be a little bit closer to, yeah. but I think it's all gonna be about eyeballing. Yeah, we cannot uh, rely on any any of the charts. Mm. So we have to go in uh, with the uh, sun behind us at sort of three in the afternoon. So you can see right down into the water. We've done this many times before and we'll have to do it by eyeballing. Yeah, definitely. The other thing, of course, is I've got the um, cruising guide, the pilot mm. for Indonesia. I downloaded the whole pilot for Indonesia because we'd like to go further afield at some point. And uh, it's by Andy Scott and you can get it. You can just download it. Couldn't get the hard copy 
at this stage, but we've got a whole area for the Anambus and he goes into quite a lot of detail there and gives us some Anchorage ideas. And also on noon site, there are a couple of blogs that have been written about trips to the Anambus. So a lot of useful information there as well. Thank you, the Howarths. Yes, and with that cruising guide, of course, they also give out uh, waypoints yes. as well. So you can yes. download waypoints either on Google Earth or as GPX files, which you can then install on your chart plotters. Yeah. So that should be good. So that's it. Preparation done. We're going to spend a bit more time in Tiamen when we come back. So you haven't seen so much of it this time, but hopefully when we come back, we'll do a bit more exploring. But until then, this is it. We're off. Yeah, we're out of here. So. Uh, Good luck to us and fair winds to us. Peace.